<laughs> you handled your marriage, and look where it got you. He'll be with you in a minute. Just relax. Yes, I'll see you in court. Ms. Nancy Maitland, when did you finish law school? I haven't graduated yet. But you have worked for a law firm? No. You've done research? Oh, oh yes, in school. Here are my transcripts. Oh, I see. You've taken Bill Arthur's contracts class. He and I did law review together. Oh, he's a wonderful lecturer. Superior golfer. Are you married? Uh, no, divorced. And I have a young son. Well, then you'll find it difficult to work nights. Oh, no, I can always arrange for someone to be with him. Oh. Well, your transcript, although certainly adequate, is by no means singular. How many uh, cattle await the slaughter? Just five more candidates, Mr. Dunstan. I'll be there in a moment. Uh, would you like me to leave a sample brief? No, no, that won't be necessary. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Dunson, I want you to know something. Yes? I, I, don't, I don't know quite how to say this. Yes? Uh, I, I know I may seem underqualified, but I'm sure I'm capable of doing the work, and I know I'd bring something extra to the job. What might that be? Uh, desperation. I I'm a single mother trying to make it on my own, and it's rough. I know I've got a lot to learn, but what I do, I do well, very well. Uh, sit down, Miss Maitland. Nancy, isn't it? Yes. You know, when you walked into this office and sat there so demurely, I took one look at you and I said to myself, no good. Far too pretty to have any brains. I apologize for misjudging you. Leave your class schedule with my secretary. We'll discuss your hours, your salary, and your responsibilities day after tomorrow. Can you start Wednesday? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Welcome to Maxwell, Dunstan, and Young. Congratulations. Here, here. My daughter, the lawyer. Bravo. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. Oops, roast is calling. <sighs> what, Maxwell, Dunstan, and Young? Very prestigious outfit. Oh, I know. I'll work, be working directly with Dunstan. Oh, that's fantastic. He's a top man in this field. I told him I'd be the best clerk he's ever had. Now all I have to do is come through. Oh, I'm sure you will. I think they might offer you a full-time position when you graduate. Well, they will if I have anything to do with it. <laughs> Watch this. Lean to the left, lean to the right. Stand up, sit down, fight, fight, fight. She made the cut. You couldn't let me tell him. Well, I guess more congratulations are in order. Hey, that's terrific. Bravo! Cheerleading? That's right. It also stands for instant popularity. Why else would I put myself through this torture? Oh, buddy. Well, congratulations. I hope you really enjoy it. Oh, I haven't made it yet. And you won't unless you display confidence as the cheerleading manual instructs. Come on, time to practice. As you can tell, she's getting paid by the hour. Move it, buddy, move it! Oh, oh, I'm on, let's cheer. Cheer. Don't you hate it? Well, you loved it. I think in retrospect, you enjoyed it more than I did. Ah, uh, I like the pageantry. You like the short skirts. Nancy, could you help me? <laughs> Hello? Uh, yeah, speaking. Oh, Mr. Dunstan. Mike, are you surprised? Well, yes, I didn't know how you knew I was here. I've moved. There's nothing wrong, is there? No, 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 no. I got your phone number from your resume. Be sure to give me a new one. Oh, I will. Look, I know you're not uh, working until Wednesday officially, but we're having a little cocktail party tomorrow in the office. One of the junior partners are moving east. I thought it might be a good way for you to get acquainted. Oh, how nice of you to think of that. Around 6 o'clock. Yes. Yes, thank you. Bye. A new researcher? Yes, I'm inviting her to Dan's going away party. Her? Ms. Nancy Maitland. Oh, you mean the blonde with, uh... You noticed. Yeah, she's sensational. I suppose you'll be working very closely, the two of you. 
Very. Well, I admire your dedication and your taste. Uh, to Ms. Maitland. Bless them all. When. Captain. You look like that in our uniforms? After plastic surgery, maybe. All right, I want two lines of six and alternate positions. Let's go. All right, now I want everyone to take a good look at the girls around you. By the end of the week, there'll only be two of you left. <laughs> You're going to be judged in three areas. First one is personality, for those of you who have one. <laughs> and the second, Claire will explain to you. Appearance. A cheerleader's appearance is one of her greatest assets. But at all times, she must struggle to maintain it. That's exactly the point. A perfect leap and unkempt hair cancel each other out, you guys, okay? So watch it. All right, the third and most important is physical agility. So those of you that are klutzes, get out and try the debating team. All right, let's try some cheer endings. Let me see the fight leap. Ready? Set? Go! <laughs> Buddy, it's a leap, not a jump. Okay, let's try the stag leap. Ready? Set? Go! Uh, Buddy, if that's it, you're gonna be going a lot of places stag, okay? <laughs> All right, Margie, would you like to lead Dig Me Daddy? Yeah. Why are you giving Buddy Lawrence such a hard time? She's cute, she's smart, and she's really nice. Right, but what we're looking for is true. Swing them high, swing them low. Come on, Ben King, let's go! How do I look? Oh! Oh, thank you, I need that. I'm a wreck. Oh, relax. It's easier said than done. Let's go. Oh, I thank you for the lift. I, I don't know how to tell you this, but my car's not going to be ready for a few days. It's all right. You're too nervous to drive anyway. All right? Okay. Let's go. Oh, I almost forgot. The $75. Oh, thank you for this, too. It won't happen again. From now on, everything's going to be okay. Let's go. Okay. You're going to be spending a lot of time in there. But right now, there's a party going on. <clears throat> ah, Martin Hilson, this is Nancy Maitland. Hi. Hello. I think I'm in love. How nice for you. I hope you'd be very happy. <laughs> very nice. You handled that very well. There's Maxwell. With any luck, the next party will be his retirement. Oh, Stanley. Hello, Michael. Splendid party. Stanley Maxwell, this is Nancy Maitland. Nancy will be researching that case we're handling in New Mexico. Are you a lawyer, my dear? Oh, not yet, but I'm on my way. It didn't look like that when I was in law school. Fortunately for us, times have changed. Just don't distract my boys. Law is a serious business, young lady. It's got a lot of energy. With self-restraint like that, you're wasting your time being a lawyer. You should be a judge. Well, don't I rate an introduction? I always assume you women can fend for yourself. Really? Since when? Nancy, this is Roz Guinness, our token brilliant lawyer. How do you do? Hello. Roz, this is Nancy Maitland. Oh. Well, would either you two like a drink? No, no thanks. Excuse me. So you're the new clerk. Welcome. How did you know? Well, word gets around quickly when a blonde joins the firm. Oh. I can be redhead in no time. Uh, I don't think that would help. <laughs> Tell me, are we the only women who work in this office? We are the only women who do not have to make coffee or take dictation. I hope we get a chance to work together. I'd really like that. Except that Mike has let it be known that you're his. Not giving away all the secrets of you, Ron. Oh, no, not me. She can fill in her own coloring book. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. I'm sure you're going to like it here. 
Everyone thinks you're terrific. A little premature of them. No, I don't think so. In fact, hiring you was the smartest thing I've done all week. It's only Tuesday. A whole day wasted. Have dinner with me tonight, and we can make up a lost time. I'm sorry. I'm afraid I've already made plans. Tomorrow, then. You can tell me all about your day. I don't know if I can get a sitter at such short notice. Oh, wait, wait a minute. You told me there'd be no obstacles to your working late. Oh, yes, but I, I, I didn't... Well, then it's all settled. Uh, now, mix it up. Your colleagues are eager to meet you. Hey, Nancy. Daddy. Uh, oh, I came yeah. here to pick you up. Uh, the car's parked though, way down there. Now. Well, how'd it go? Fine. They nice people? I don't know. Something wrong? I don't know. I... I'm just disappointed. Oh, well, honey, they don't know you yet. No, but they all acted as if they did, too well, you know? There was a lot of joking and staring and uh, a couple of real obnoxious remarks. <laughs> you know, it's late in the day, you know, the guys like to relax. I just thought it'd be different. Different? How? Well, I thought finally I was someplace where someone would be more interested in what I had to say about law than uh, uh, one of my legs. Well, you're an unknown quantity as an attorney. But you've got demonstrably great legs. Oh, Daddy, not you, too. Me, too, what? What? That's such a chauvinistic thing to say. Oh, come on. Can't see. My arms aren't broken. I'm perfectly capable of doing that myself. Hi, how was it? Oh, according to Daddy, great. Daddy? Go ahead, go ahead, tell your mother. Nancy thinks I'm a male chauvinist pig. How can a sophisticated man be so... What's going on here? Hey, here's the butter. Nancy is upset because some of the men at the party noticed that she's a woman. That's not why I'm upset, and that's not what happened either. The, the whole time I was there, I felt like I was on display. Well, of course you did. It's a new situation. Relax, Nancy. This job is a wonderful opportunity for you to meet people. I want a job where I can earn some money and learn about the law. If I want to meet people, I'll go to a singles bar. Oh, I don't think that's what he meant, Nancy. Not exactly, but you should keep an open mind. I mean, lawyers make magnificent husbands. I can vouch for that. Oh, I give up. Come on, Nancy, where's your sense of humor? I saw a handsome player walking down the floor. I said, oh, handsome player, what's the team for? He said, pretty mama, pretty mama, don't you know? Buddy, for heaven's sakes. I think it was really good. They'll be fanning at my feet. Whatever happened to 2468, who do we appreciate? I can't stand seeing her faked out by all that. Well, she's enjoying it. It's part of the world she's in now. Nonsense. And that party is part of the world you're in now. And if you don't mind my saying so, it's the real world. You better start getting used to it. I can't. Why not? Because I know the signs. In school or, or in a social situation, I can sidestep it when I see it happening. But I'm going to be working in that office. I don't look forward to the prospect of having to deal with that day after day. I think you're exaggerating. I think I've talked about this all I want to for one day. I'm gonna get Timmy. First job, Jitters? I hope so. Because if her attitude doesn't change, she's allowed to lose that job. I think that would be a shame. If you don't mind me saying so, it's not a good idea to leave your door unlocked in a neighborhood like this. Okay. Oh, do I have time for a cup of coffee? Uh, yeah. Just a bit. <laughs> you feeling better than last night? Oh, yeah, I guess. Dad just made me mad. He's so... Old-fashioned? Yeah. Just chalk it up to him being an incorrigibly unevolved man. <sighs> Mary in the librarian today? Oh, not you, too. 
I bet you're in there egging Buddy on about the cheerleading, huh? No way. She doesn't need that. Oh, no, but I need a lot of smart cracks. No, you need to get started working, Nancy. In a good job, in a prestigious office. Because you know who you are. And you also know you can take care of yourself. The only thing Buddy knows is that she doesn't have a date Saturday night. And in her crowd, that's like having bubonic plague. Okay, well, I don't want to be late on my first day to work. Oh, um, I'm afraid I can't pay you back this week. Oh. I'm going to donate your money to the ERA. Didn't you call for help? Wouldn't it be easier if I had one of the stools? Easier, but less fun. Uh, oh, guess what? I think we can get a summary judgment on the merits in that little matter. Well, if that's true, you've already earned your first week's salary. Yeah, you see, if we, if we view this issue in regard to the precedent set by Spingold versus Illinois... You washed your I, hair. Uh, mm hmm Smells nice. See, so, oh, yesterday, actually. This is good. Write up a memo and uh, leave it on my desk. Okay. Don't forget about dinner tonight. Oh, Mr. Dunson, I... Mike, please, remember? I'll see you tonight. Is she in, please? Is Nancy Maitland? Uh, Ross. Hi, I, I met you at the cocktail. Yes. Oh, me too. Uh, uh, look, I, I was wondering if maybe you'd be free for lunch today. Yeah, any time. Oh, that's terrific. Fine, yeah, I'll see you then. Bye. The problem is, of course, writing off these lunches. <laughs> so how do you like it so far? Uh, I guess it's a little early to say. No, it isn't. All right, two questions then. One, how long have you been here? And how do you stand it? Dunstan moving in. Uh, well, it seems to have a thing about hair. Oh, yes, you washed your hair. It smells fresh. Oh, I was afraid of that. <laughs> How well do you know Dunstan? Uh, Yale Law School, Class 61, Magna Cum Laude, Yale Law Review. That's not what I meant. Um... In other words, you want to know if he made a move on me, too. Okay, I'll tell you. Mike Dunstan has what is quaintly referred to as a weakness for women. So the answer is, yes, he did. And the answer to the question that you're not going to ask is, yes, I did. Maybe we're gonna talk about something else. What, the climate? <laughs> That's exactly what we're talking about, Nancy. Let me tell you, the weather's the same everywhere else. I don't believe that boils down to what you're willing to do to get what you want. That's insane. I'm a trained woman. That's nice. I was, too. And I wanted to make sure I got to use that training. So that I got to be a lawyer. There's no better shop in town than the one we're in right now. Staying there was more important to me than anything else. So I compromised. It got me what I wanted. I am a lawyer, and a successful one. So, in answer to the question you're afraid to ask, 
What did it cost me? <laughs> it cost me plenty. Right. So in order to give each of you ample time, show us what you can do. We've decided to try out half of you today and the other half tomorrow. Well, what about our two days of practice? Buddy, unpredictability is a big part of sports. The ideal cheerleader is prepared for anything at all times. OK, we'll take A through K today and O through Z tomorrow. Alistair, Kathy, stay here. The rest of you, good luck, and we'll see you tomorrow. OK, buddy, A through K is today. Well, my real name is Letitia. Oh, Letitia, huh? It'll look real neat spelled on a sweater. Just get in line. OK, I want two lines of three. We're going to do the jumps immediately. OK, it'll be fight, stag, split. OK? Ready? Set? Go! Fight! Stag! Split! Fight! Stag! Split! What do you think? Well, it's clear, concise, cogently written. If you have passed the bar, I turn the whole case over to you and retire. <sighs> well, this calls for a drink. How about it? Uh, well, well, not if we're going to be working. Oh, don't be silly. Come on. This is a special occasion, your first official legal brief. What'll it be, Scotch? Well, maybe a little sherry. Oh, good idea. I think I'll join you. Sherry. To Nancy, I foresee an incredible future. Tired. Yeah. Uh, you'll get over that. Hard work, long hours. You're going to have to kiss your personal life goodbye. I don't know if it's a blessing or a sacrifice. Tell me about yourself. You mentioned Timmy. Are there any other men in your life? Mm. Sorry. You can take the fifth. Excuse me, Mr. Dunstan. Dinner's here. Right over here. Thank you. I'll be going now. Have a good evening. You too, thank you. Well, I didn't know whether you wanted corned beef or turkey, so I ordered both. And potato chips, coleslaw. Ah. I hope you like white. Yeah, I like white fine. I had a feeling we'd... Uh, we'd be working late, so I thought if we... Relaxed a little first, we might get more accomplished. Okay, Your Honor, I confess. I haven't been completely honest with you. But I... Uh, I didn't plan it. You see, my trouble is I'm a normal man, and when I'm confronted with a desirable, attractive, available woman... And I've worked with dozens of women, Nancy. You're something special. Look, I'm leveling with you. This is not easy for me. I'm flattered. Um, but I'd like to keep my, my business life separate from my private life. Well, when your business life is as demanding as law, sometimes there's no option. Well, I'll chance it. You're married, of course, so... I consider that my problem. OK, uh, if that's the way you wish to live your life, that's none of my business. But you are my boss. Uh, and I think a working relationship should be just that. So thank you, but uh, no thank you. This is really getting boring. But then the injured, innocent routine always is. It takes two to play this game, Nancy, and you made it perfectly clear that you were willing to join in. 
There isn't a man in the world who would have done what you did at your interview, telling me how desperate you were. You know what you look like. You made a heavy feminine appeal for chivalry, and you got exactly what you asked for. If that's what that seemed like, I'm sorry. I, th I think I should go. Oh, Nancy, please stay. Don't go. Uh, Come on. Let's have dinner. We won't talk about it anymore. Trust me. Come on. I'm not some dirty old man who's going to attack you. I seem to be at an impasse. I've told you where I stand. The next move is up to you. I guess that means I'm fired. We could have a great time together, Nancy. And you could have a brilliant career. Think about it and we'll talk tomorrow. All the laughter. All the applause. You certainly lead the life of Riley. No, this is just a fluke. I don't have to be at court till two. Judge Hendricks and his partner made the finals of the Pro-Am Tennis Classic. Ah, any mail for me? Other than bills? There's a special delivery letter for Nancy. From Hawaii, must be Jeff. I was gonna call and ask her to lunch. I can bring it to her then. I called earlier, just to say hello. They said she hadn't come in today. Oh? I'm a little worried about her, darling. I spoke to her fairly late last night. She was awfully depressed. Did you try the apartment? No answer. Of course, she may be taking Timmy to school. Well, let's try again right now. Busy. Is she here? Who? Oh, buddy, of course. Of course not. It's the middle of a school day. Which leads me to ask... I said there was an emergency at home. What emergency? Buddy didn't make cheerleaders. Well, how could you possibly know that? You don't even go to the same school. Grapevine. Noreen Spangler, who's in Buddy's English lit class, still died. Nan Sheldon, she's, you know, Abby's sister. In other words, it's official. She must feel like a terrible dork. Dork? She was desperate to make it. I know her. She's going to figure that the only boys who will ask her out are the dorks, wimps, and nerds. Well, it's nonsense. I mean, jumping up and down on a football field is not particularly sophisticated or uh, appealing. Doug, you were the one who said you thought cheerleaders were so dandy. Yeah, well, all guys, I mean, they like her cheerleaders. It has nothing to do with the girls themselves. I mean, Buddy should want more than that. She does, but she was willing to settle. Anyway, aren't you contradicting yourself? Didn't you just tell Nancy not to be upset because the men in her office were, uh, looking her over? I don't think it's right to keep on changing her story. It makes people feel very unsettled. You heard the, uh, lady. Still busy. I'm gonna drop by down on my way to the office. I'll march Miss Glant tidings back to the halls of Ivy. Jeff, isn't it? Yeah. He seems to be having a rough time. Well, he's not the only one, is he? 
Your mother says she talked to you last night. You were very depressed. What happened yesterday? Well, I was upset about something. But I thought about it, and I realized I just have to try and be more flexible. You were right, you know. I am in the real world now, and uh, the demands get to be... Oh, let's forget about it. It's all settled for me now. Wait, no, wait, 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 wait. What demands are you talking about? Look, we've already been through this, uh, and you told me I was overreacting. I wasn't talking about demands. I was, you know, talking about general attitudes. Well, now I'm talking about specifics. When a man makes remarks about uh, a lady's hair or her legs, what do you think he means? What'd they say? Yes, but what do you think they want? Are you saying that someone in that office is demanding that you get into bed with him? That's exactly what I'm saying. All that joking at the beginning is just the romancing. The next step's the nitty-gritty. I'm sorry. I thought if a woman had good legs, it was perfectly uh, natural to admire them. That's you, Daddy. You've never treated a woman that way. I guess it breaks down to the admirers and the acquirers. It's a lot of pressure, Nancy. Must be awful. It is awful. When I called, I said I'd be in by one o'clock. I don't want to be late. Hey, don't worry about me. I know how to handle things now. Let's go. Should be done? Yeah, tons, but since when are you in charge of laundry? I'm not, but I read somewhere that simple tasks can be therapeutic, so I decided to give it a try. Why the sudden need for therapy? I bombed with Buddy and I feel crummy. Buddy? She's upstairs mourning for her lost pom-poms. Lost pom-poms, she didn't make the cheerleaders. Oh, she's just destroyed. Oh, she's nuts. You try telling her that, I tried everything else. I'll keep you advised. That's dry clean. No visitors allowed. Hi, Peaches. Didn't you hear me? Yes, I heard you. Didn't you hear me? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, buddy. I know how much you wanted it. No, you didn't. Nobody knew. So what are you going to do? You planning on staying in here for the next two years? Why not? I don't see anybody banging my door down and asking me to go out. <sighs> buddy, did it ever occur to you that you're not the cheerleader type? Thanks a lot. It's true. You're no more a cheerleader than I was a football player. You a football player? I was cut the first day of tryouts. I fumbled every time I got my hands on the ball. Why'd you try out then? You don't even like football. Because I used the same reasoning you did. If you can't beat them, join them. Everybody gets a crazy desire to be a regular person at some point in their life. Exactly. Everybody likes to be noticed, too. But you don't have to be noticed for what's on the surface. You can be noticed for what you've got that no one else has. Well, everybody knows that's not the way it works. We only know it looks like the other guys are having more fun. On the other hand, who did TJ choose? And what about Zach? Yeah, well, where are they when I need them? There are others out there somewhere, you know that. Yeah. Actually, you know what? There was this one guy in school. He was going to school in the East and he got transferred to my school. And maybe blondes don't mean much to him yet. Besides that, those blondes are at practice. That's right. You keep me informed, huh? I will. Okay. Maybe he has an older sister. <sighs> I live in hope. Come on. The usual procedure, Miss Maitland, is to call in if you intend to be late. 
I did after I made my mind up about a few things. Yes? I considered your offer. Uh, I think I understand it now. You've made a smart decision. Sit down. I thought quite a lot about you last night, particularly after I reread the memo you did on the Lytton case. You have a good future in law, Nancy. More than that, you have a future with this firm. In fact, I was talking to Stanley last night. Excuse me. Yes? John Aaron, long distance. Oh, I've got to take this. Why don't you continue your research? We'll have plenty of time to talk over dinner. Oh, wait a minute. You, you, you didn't let me finish what I had to say. I said that I understood your offer, and, and I do. Everything that you promise me are, are things that I want. Uh, a chance to work with a lawyer of your caliber, a firm of this reputation, a uh, salary, the future. And so this morning, after some heavy panicking, uh, I was determined to come back here on your terms in order to get the things I want. See, then something very unexpected happened. What was that? Got a letter from my ex-husband. With a nice, big, fat check. With an explanation as to why there'd be no more checks for a while. That I'd have to make it on my own. And I realized that if there had been a check in here, I wouldn't have set foot in this office again. My career as a lawyer isn't worth it. I don't understand. What I'm trying to say is that the only reason I really reconsidered your offer was for the money. And we both know what that makes me, don't we? A pragmatist. No. A hooker. And I didn't sweat my way through law school for that. Men like you can take away my jobs. I can't control that. But you can't take away my self-respect unless I let you. And I damn well won't let you. Very good. Especially the letter. You know, if you ever have a chance to use that in court, it would work magnificently for introducing evidence. I'll keep it in mind. And maybe you should. Now, the federal courts have ruled that sexual harassment on the job can be prosecuted under Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Would you consider settling out of court? I'd like to say, um... You can't blame a guy for trying. But I won't. Well, you better get back to work. I need all that material on the Lytton matter by 7 o'clock. You can leave it on Linda's desk. Hello, John. You'll be there. Yes, John. I thought you could both use a treat. You made that mousse? Well, not exactly. I started to, but Kate said she wasn't up to cleaning the kitchen when I was finished, so she made it. What's the thought that counts? Oh, would you get that? Hello? Um, yes, yeah, she is. Okay, one moment. It's for you. Who is it? Someone with a deep voice. I'm probably really trying to be funny. Hello. Oh, hi. Huh? N no. Tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. Bye. Who was it? Mike Dunstan. I don't believe it. Junior. Junior? Well, he was going to school in the East, and then he got transferred to my school. And now he wants to take me out to a movie tomorrow night. Oh, rah, rah, rah. Eat your heart, so pom-pom girls. Uh, wait a minute. I don't know about that. Uh, you know, like father, like son, you know. Well, think of it this way. 
Like sister, like sister. 